Hi everyone and welcome back to Rich Reviews. I'm Richard, welcome back to the 458. And today we're gonna to do a little bit of a different type of video. Um, today we're gonna to do a bit of a talk and drive and the talk and drive is gonna include um, talking about the, the 458, different aspects of the 458, ownership of the 458, and is it the right time to buy a 458 now? Is it because last of naturally aspirated V8s, are people selling them, coming into winter, are they buying them, etc. etc. We're gonna cover that off and, and while we're while we're driving, we're gonna pop off and get a coffee as well. So I bought this 458 in October last year, October the 22nd to be exact. The ownership has been um, great, you know, as I detailed in my previous video. Um, check below if you want to see the video on my ownership for the last year, what it's been like owning a 458. It's been, you know, overall cool, etc. But it has been some negatives. You know, we've got a lot of um, negativity from certain people um, who aren't happy with, you know, you're driving a, a red Ferrari, perceivably. Um, and you know, that's that's not invoked in any way, shape, or form. It's just, yeah, you know, just seems to be how it is. But it, it really surprised us. Really surprised us. Um, some people get very animated in a negative way about the car. And that's a worry, you know, that, that does provide a worry about driving such a car. And it does provide a, a, um, a level of anxiety and stress about the car because it means it consolidates your thought process that you can't park it anywhere unless in a very affluent area. Um, and you've got to watch the car like a hawk all the time, you know, unless you're such a wealthy person that it doesn't worry you if somebody causes a hundred grand's worth of damage on your car, then you've got to, you've got to be careful you've got to be mindful of that aspect all the time and that causes a level of stress now you could argue the point well why buy a supercar then if it causes that level of stress well because the positives outweigh the negatives when the when the negatives outweigh the positives then that's the time when you've got to think about selling up um, the positives are there is a lot of positive reaction to the car, obviously, and it's so fantastic to let youngsters sit in the car. Their parents ask if their youngsters can sit in the car, and you can see the little children's light, you know, faces light up, the boys and girls see their faces light up when they sit in the car. It's a fantastic feeling. If I had the opportunity when I was young, you know, I would have relished in it. It's, it's just a dream to be able to sit in a, in a lovely car like this when you're that age, you know? Um, because most people, you know, they had these sort of cars on their, on their walls or whether it be a 911 or whether it be a Ferrari Testarossi, you know, back in the day when it was when it was my age, you know. That has to be thought about when you own these sort of cars. Um, with regards to value, you know, the cars, when I bought this car, I bought it um, in very troubled times when there was the perception that nobody knew what was going to happen with the car market, um, whether or not we were going to drop into a really bad um, financial a recession or how things were going to go so that sort of helped me a little bit when I bought the car because it, it meant that I got the car probably a fair bit cheaper than if uh, we hadn't invented such a uncertain times so that worked to my benefit but obviously it was a very big risk I was taking because if we got into a recession and I, I'd lost my contract and didn't have any work etc then I would have had to sell it pretty quickly and I would have taken a loss on the sale of the car but as it is potentially the cars increased in price because people haven't um, had the holidays that they can go away, um, that because people haven't had the opportunity to get out of the country and to go on their, their holidays, obviously this is with regards to wealthy people, uh, wealthy people haven't been able to go on their, their perceivable cruises, got, um, been able to take their yachts out, uh, which in itself costs a fortune in diesel fuel. Don't get me started on that with regards to polluting the world, you know, yachts, the amount of diesel they use, etc., and aircraft, of course, but that's another subject. Um, but um, so those people, have, instead of spending money on their holidays, these affluent people, they've been spending money on buying supercars. So of course that meant that supply and demand has increased. Therefore, there has been a substantial amount of um, requests in for cars and that haven't been able to be met. So you, what happens there is you get a long queue for waiting for cars where people are ordering cars, uh, where people don't want to wait for the, for the long queues. 
um, they actually purchase a car in the second hand market um, and that means there's a high demand on the second hand market for, for not just supercars but for all cars but it has a big effect or it has had a big effect on supercars so of course it's increased the prices so it's increased the prices on 458s as well so it's actually worked where it could have gone very negatively in my favour it's actually gone positively in my favour but it only matters if you're going to sell and I'm not going to sell Obviously, if I had a really good offer for the car, you'd be crazy not to sell. At the end of the day, I have an entrepreneurial mindset. Therefore, if somebody offered me um, an offer for the car that would be too good to miss, then you know, I'd probably accept it. But uh, I've got no wish to sell the car and no want to sell the car at the moment. So what does that mean regarding prices? Now, we're coming into winter, so what happens usually with the winter periods is if people buy, for the people that buy supercars for for the summer period, which a lot of people do, and that's quite surprised me as well, what you get is people buying them on finance, um, and if they get the, the bubble going to hit for PCP, if they get the bubble going to hit um, towards the winter period, because it usually hits towards the end of the first year, then, which means they have to pay a substantial amount to pay off the remainder of the car, or they refinance the bubble, then commonly they're looking to get out of the car at the end of summer, at the beginning of autumn, and come, you know closing into winter. Therefore, there's going to be a glut of supercars coming onto the market. Has that been the case so far? So if we're looking at how many 458s are available, for example, last year, around the time when we were looking, there are about 70 to 80 458s across the whole board of all 458s, especially Alienverters, etc., um, Spiders and uh, Italians. If you're looking now, there's around 53 that are available. So that's quite a drop. When you look at that as a percentage basis, that's what, 30% less amount of supercars available? I haven't done the calculation, I'm not quick at doing math, so that, I could be wrong there, uh, but it just seems about right, around 25-30%. Um, so maybe even higher than that, actually. So that's, that's quite a substantial difference with regards to the amount that are usually available and coming up to, the, to for sale in the marketplace around the um, autumn time and coming into winter. So the market price, so, the, so the, the, the situation with regards to COVID and the, the supply and demand on supercars is working in the favour of keeping supercar prices higher and keeping 458 prices higher. But 458 prices anyway will be, will be buoyant or kept fairly buoyant on the basis that it's the last naturally aspirated V8. So that is a big thing. And whether you think that's a thing or not, with regards to a perception of whether it's important or not, it is a thing in the marketplace. People do want these naturally aspirated 458s. Um, it's a, it is a big thing because of the sound, the feel, everything else. 488s, F8s, brutally a lot faster, especially F8, brutally a lot faster. Just lacks the soul, in my opinion. There just isn't the same soul. 488s, a lot better than the F8s, in my opinion, but still, they just do not have the soul of a 458 and it, it keeps the prices strong on the 458. So is it a good time to buy a 458? Probably not, but when is a good time to buy one? Are they going to keep going up in prices? How is, you know, is our 458 prices going to be affected by the supply and demand? When supply is increased on supercars in general, there isn't obviously going to be an increase on, on 458s with regards to supply, only the ones that are going to be sold second hand. Is that going to lower 458 prices? Well, maybe a bit, maybe a bit, but I don't think much. I think 458 prices are going to stay pretty stable, especially for the lower mileage version. So for the, for the high option version, this is a low mileage and high option car. I could probably put, and I'm, I've recently had some discussions with, with people in the know, dealerships and such like, I could probably put another five, 10,000 miles on this car and get out of it for pretty much what I bought it for. Um, again, that's at the current market price. Um, so, and again, that's at the current, that's with the current market, you know, assuming that the market's gonna stay about comparable to where it is. So when is it ever gonna be a good time to buy a 458? Well, now, between now and really November and Christmas is gonna be the best time, would be the best time over the next year to buy a 458 because people aren't gonna be using their cars over the summer periods, uh, people are, because people aren't gonna be using their cars over the winter periods, or very few of them are gonna be using these cars over the winter periods, they're gonna therefore gonna be stored, therefore they're gonna sell them, they're gonna be selling them now. So now is gonna be the best time to buy a 458. Just got a Porsche Taycan just gone past there. White Porsche Taycan. 
Um, so if the prices are holding strong now, are they going to increase next year? Well, don't really know. It's possible they could increase further next year. It may be, but it may be that they stay static to around about where they are now. Um, you know, you're going to pay about for a spider. You're going to pay about, pay about um, a twenty thousand pound premium to get a spider over in Italia. Uh, a very highly optioned good Italia is going to be around the one fifty, one sixty mark nowadays, especially if the mileage is a bit low. So. It's um, it's interesting how the, how the prices are at the moment, and um, you know whether or not it's a good time, and whether or not it's a good time to buy a four five eight or not. Um, depends if you're if you're looking for the market to bottom out. I don't think it's ever going to. I think it ain't going to get much lower than it is at the moment. So now is pretty much the best time to buy a 458 if you're going to buy one so around springtime next year around march april may that's going to be the time when prices are going to increase that's going to be when they're at the highest demand because that's when people are looking to get into uh, these types of cars so now is the best time over the next year period to buy a 458 with regards to chronological time frames but who knows what's going to happen next year with the marketplace? Who knows? We're just driving into our usual place now, um, into Marlborough. We're going to pop in and we're going to get ourselves a, a coffee. It's a, it's, a, it's a lovely area, Marlborough. And, uh, we, we use Marlborough because it's not too far from where we live. And it's, it's great for parking the car. Uh, people love the car there. We don't get any abuse in Marlborough. And it's, there's a nice little coffee place there. We can just sit outside, have a coffee, and, and watch the world go by and relax. So um, it's a nice little, nice little drive in as well um, on nice roads. So it's great. Uh, it's, it's good roads for the 458, although we've taken it very easy today um, because of uh, doing the video. So it's been, nice little, nice, it's been a nice, relaxed drive in. Mostly we've had the car in automatic. Um, and that's a good thing about this car, it's got a dual nature. You can put it into automatic, drive it nice and steady. Fairly easy going, considering it's, um, it's a supercar, fairly easy going in, in low tra in, in low speed traffic. And then obviously when you want to punch it, you want to open it up a bit more when the roads open up and you're outside of any congested areas and it's safe to do so, um, then you can switch it to manual and use the, use the dual clutch gearbox um, and the pedal shifts and, and um, you know, use them, and use them work the performance a bit more. So it's pretty cool. So it's a really cool car to own. And uh, watch this space because we may be doing a, a bit of a, a bit of a, an Italian flavoured trip with the car um, over in the next year or so. Hopefully next year. But uh, we've, we've got some planning to do. So watch this space. Subscribe to get more information on on that possible road trip. Um, that will be coming forward and we'll, you know, we'll be leaking more information as we go forward with regards to that road trip and of course we'll be taking you along for the journey. So we're just driving back from catching a coffee in Marlborough and there was a good case in point there, uh, an American actually, an American lady um, asked me if her little girl could, um, she could take a photograph of the car and uh, I said yeah she can sit in the car no worries you know she took a photograph of her sitting in the car so that was a case in point where you know it really this car really polarizes um, people's um, perceptions really and their thoughts the people either love the car or they hate it uh, there doesn't seem to be much in between um, it's just how it is I guess and it certainly wasn't like that with my 993 in general people liked you or they didn't really give a damn um, there was no hate but uh, it's very weird very interesting how um, it polarizes people's um, people's thoughts and people's perceptions towards the car. Is it towards the brand? Is it because it's a red Ferrari? Possibly. If it was a classic Ferrari, I bet you it would um, have the same effect on people, the same negative effect on people if it's a classic Ferrari. I think it's just because it's perceived as a modern Ferrari and it's the definitive color of red. Maybe it's in people's faces, who knows. But uh, there you have it, that's, that's the thoughts for today's video. Um, time to buy, possibly. Is it gonna be the best time to buy now over the next annual period? Yes, perceivably, because it ain't gonna get any better, the prices. I can't see the prices lowering um, next spring. Maybe they'll lower a bit over winter, but I don't think so. If you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, it's great content to come. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you're not subscribed, then please think about subscribing. And we'll catch you in the next video.